corruption in boxing here. A, a belated uh, post-fight review. Um, was hoping to get this out a lot sooner, but I'm heavily under the weather. It's snowing where I am in Europe. Okay, so Murat Irongasiev successfully defends his IBF Cruiserweight World Championship and thus picking up the WBA Super World Championship belt. For those who may not be aware, the WBA, the sanctioning body, had upgraded Junior Dortico's his regular World Championship belt to their Super World Championship status. Uh, a fully justifiable action and thus um, demoting the previous incumbent holder Denis Lebedev to their champion in emeritus position. The unification bout took place in Russia as part of the um, World Boxing Super Series, the Cruiserweight Division, the second semi-final. A fight that uh, I think surpassed the first semi-final pretty much on all elements of skill, um, all of the components you can think of, you know, determination, you know, punching power, uh, punch resistance, sort of warrior-like characteristics, um, you know, highlight knockdowns, knockouts, it was a, you know, a spectacular fight, but uh, let, let's break down that fight in, you know, in greater detail now. Murad Gassif having um, knocked at Junior Dorticos in the 12th round to become the unified champion. Um, so our prediction on uh, Murat winning by knockout inside the distance uh, materialized as did all of the, 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 the vital um, details we alluded to, exactly how the fight would play out how Murat would utilize his tools, specifically his educated left hand, um, to break Junia down. So, uh, yeah, let, let, let's let's get into that 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 part. Now, early on in the fight, uh, Murat conceded real estate in the middle of the ring, and found and found himself backed up against the ropes. You know, Junior Dorticos is just consumed with this um, knockout doctor montage. Um, his objective is to inflict maximum damage and dispose of his opponents as soon as possible. That's you know that is pretty much how he's fought every fight. Um, and if you really analyze it, it, it is very much an anti-Cuban. Uh, school of boxing um, it's just something that you know power punches bruises tend to embody um, but I think Murat was happy wouldn't be the, the, the correct word but he was he was he was comfortable with being backed up on the ropes his punch volume was extremely economical but I think he was he was there for an extended period for three main reasons the first one being reconnaissance. Murat was observing, he was analyzing, he was trying to gauge the, the combinations that Unius would fire. And I think Murat gauged very quickly that Unia was, had just fell into that monotonous rhythmic punching of jab, right cross, jab, right cross, one, two, occasional hooks around the corner a very occasional body shot um, even when Murat would end up square on the ropes you know that is a highly precarious position that a, a trainer does not advocate that his fighter ends up in when you're in within a sideways on profile naturally there's there's less of a target to aim at so if you're if you're operating within a tight guard then then your opponent clearly has you know the top of the head maybe the you know the the lower sector of his torso to aim at that's it but murat at times was just too square on the ropes but uh, you need you know 
did not exploit that precarious position and he did not invest in the body um, he just had tunnel vision he didn't vary his attacks head or body he didn't try and set up his power punches the jab and the right cross were thrown with the same velocity even the same power um, now the, the second reason why I think Murat strategically remained on the ropes was to uh, almost give Uni a, a delusion of grandeur thinking that he's, he's causing damage but in actual fact he wasn't Murad's objective was to try and take the sting out of Dorticos. You know, there is a saying in boxing, if you take a big puncher into deep water, i.e. the later rounds, there is a great propensity that he will be spent. Um, so Murat, um, in, in trying to exacerbate the depletion of um, Junior's energy, he was just flailing away without, without a great deal of methodology. Um, Murat's technique remained consistent. We mentioned before he he um, operates with a very tight guard. His chin is tucked deep into his pecs. Um, that's something Abel Sanchez advocates in all of his fighters. And also Leo Santa Cruz has a very similar like, you know, turtle shell type of defense. Um, so, Unia uh, was was pretty much 80% of Unia's punches, I felt, were being uh, taken on the gloves, um, elbows, uh, forearms, um, some punches were getting through, absolutely, um, but Murat, um, he likes to bob and weave a little bit, you know, he likes to you know, there is perpetual motion with his gloves, he's banging them, he's tapping them, he's trying to, you know, confuse, he's just trying to calculate an opening, and very quickly we saw um, uh, some counter punches forthcoming from him, the first notable counter punch was a, was a beautiful straight right hand uh, through the middle, uh, which landed flush, uh, Unia's uh, reactions were pretty non-existent um, then we saw um, Murat begin to land combination punches from the lead position not from the counter punching position um, you know he fires a very good well good is, a, is an understatement I, I think a superb uh, two punch combination he, he, he can penetrate the guard as well uh, with an uppercut and he turns it over into a hook um, and that 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 combination uh, just kept landing round after round after round Dorticos was futile in making any defensive adjustments to try and negate that same combination landing you know he could have tried smothering uh, he could have tried, you know, catching the first and then smothering the hook, or he could have tried to shift to his right or shift backwards. Um, but he, he he made no notable adjustments. Uh, um, you know, we did talk about his his porous defense, and I think that was clearly visible during this fight. Um, He's not defensive. He's not defensively conscious at all. Um, they say the best form of defense is offense. So he's he's just simply fixated on trying to get at his opponent. Um, but if your punches, if 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 the punch, if your headshots, which he was focusing on, were being blocked, you know why not go to the body? But he never. He was he, he lacked the IQ. And his corner didn't do a good job in trying to relay to him that, look, you're just expanding too much energy, hitting gloves, um, you know, invest in the body, try and vary your tactics. Now, you get the Dorticos can also fight on the back foot. We've seen that in the past. Um, 
but it was Murad who was exemplifying the better footwork, footwork as well. Um, the fundamental problem, Junior Dorticos um, displayed in this fight was that it was imperative that he kept the fight at long range and mid range. Now, Dorticos has a four inch reach advantage. To me, he physically looked the bigger man. So he's just relying on sheer brute force to break down his opponent and um, try and attain that KO victory that he was promising. That is his 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 moniker. Um, but Murat showed patience. He showed poise, precision, punch placement, power. Um, he began to increase the intensity. Um, you would note that a lot of the, a lot of Murat's punches from the fifth round onwards uh, were thrown and they were landing with a bent arm. Now a bent arm illustrates exactly where the fight took place. You can't be landing a punch with a bent arm from long range or mid range, not unless you've got you know arms as long as Inspector Gadget, um, you know like an 85, 86 inch reach. But Murat's reach, I think, is about 76. So, Dorticos was perilous to stop Murat from breaching the danger zone and coming deep into the pocket where he could unload with combinations and get to the maximum velocity. You know, you know that you know Murat, the way he turns his body, you know, shoulder rotation um, from the hips, from the legs. That's how he generates his power. It's the speed, you know, the velocity through the punch. Um, I think that combined with a natural, uh, a natural ability to punch, something that, you know, Abel Sanchez has, has commented on. Now, he may not be the most explosive or the most heaviest handed that he's felt, but he does have, you know, he does have power. But if you refine that technique, um, if you maintain, if you have the balance and the transition from 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 defense to to offense to offense, um, transferring the weight from your from your legs and punching through the target, um, you know something that uh, Shaolin Kung Fu um, talks about a lot in in if you if you read some of their ancient texts. Um, you know, I think boxers also do try and um, replicate that sort of punching style as well and those sort of techniques. Um, so Murat slowly began to break down his opponent. You know, he was working the body as well. Left hands to Dorticus. Dorticus is under Dorticus's right elbow. Um, he was targeting the organs to try and inflict maximum damage. That and combinations up top. Then he began to fire the looping right hand over, you know, high on Dorticos' head. Those are equilibrium depleting shots. So, sh slowly but surely, Murat was targeting various sectors of the body, um, sometimes simultaneously alternating. So Dorticos wouldn't wouldn't have a clue where the punches were being landed. Um, he didn't try and modify his guard. Didn't try and use his legs because his energy was being depleted because he had blown his load for the first four or five rounds. Um, that combined with the body shots that were also um, exacerbating, you know, his loss of energy. Um, and we saw eventually that Dorticos. Uh, had lost the snap and the mustard in his right hand. Um, the punches had slowly manifested into simply arm punches. Um, the snap and the successful punch he was landing was with his jab. And to be fair to him, Dorticos at times was also countering, counter punching successfully with his jab, especially when Murat was going down to the body. Um, but um, 
you know, Murat was very economical with his punches during the first half. So he had he had the greater energy and the resilience, I felt, in the second half of the fight. Um, because he was also inflicting damaging. On the defensive side, he was blocking a lot of punches, so he wasn't sustaining much damage. Because Dorticos hardly targeted the body. He did in the full front to a certain extent, but there wasn't consistent body work throughout. So Murat was still the fresher fighter. You know, he's a he's a he's the much younger fighter by about seven years as well. So when you when you um, correlate all of those um, you know all of those uh, all of those components, um, the, the the shift you know the balance of the fight had shifted firmly in favour of Murat. You know, who began to get up onto his toes. You know, he wasn't using much lateral movement later on. He was just teeing off on on, on Dorticos, breaking him down slowly, slowly, head and body, head and body, starting to wobble. The head was snapping back. Um, it was the uppercuts, the uppercuts and the hooks that were doing the damage. But Dorticos, credit to him, he showed a very good chin. Um, I was surprised as to how well his punch resistance was in this fight. I expected him to capitulate by around the mid-rounds. Just just on the sheer number of flush, hard flush punches he was taking. But credit to him, you know, that, that is the determination of a hungry undefeated fighter. You know, Dorticos spoke a lot about in the um, in, in in the preview about, you know, his determination to prove that he is the better fighter, you know, has a very young family, fighting for the family, all of those, you know, inspire and motivate a fighter, and should never underestimate, you know, the hunger of a fighter, you know, who's fighting for, you know, his family, and he was determined, and there was times in which he would use wily old tactics, grab uh, Gassiev by the waist, try and spin him around when he was in a compromising position up against the ropes, so some of those you know Cuban school of you know slick slickness evading punches slipping you know fortunately you know he did he did try and uh, put them into motion which was good to see but um Gasiev was determined you know he was not going to be he was not going to be denied and eventually um Dorticos going back to his uh, right hand um um Gassiev slipped the punch, landed a left, a, a beautiful flush left hook. Uh, Dorticos hit the canvas with some, with some momentum, some force. You know, a very heavy knockdown. That was a combination of exhaustion and uh, a fighter who had been b- systematically broken down. And the other two knockdowns that followed in the in the twelfth, uh, another left hand as well. Um, and eventually, uh, Murat uh, knocked at Dorticos through the ropes. You know, just a you know a visceral finish for the um, for the partisan home crowd, and it was a, uh, a a fitting climax to a to a magnificent display by Murat Gassiev, who um, who shocked a lot of people. They felt that he didn't have a back foot game. They felt he was just a pressure fighter on the front foot. You know, Denis Lebedev had, uh, uh, was not a uh, uh, was not uh, his appraisal of um, Gassiev before the fight was not a <laughs> there's a lot of sour grapes there. I felt, um, and even during the fight, they were going to him, and he felt it, the fight was even. But um, you know, Dorticos may have landed on may have landed based on activity. You know, he was throwing the more punches. But uh, um, Murat Gassiev, you know, he was the cerebral fighter. He was the guy who was pacing himself, you know, waiting for Dorticos to blow his load, and then he would mount his his attacks, you know, break him down, stop him, you know. That that sort of order, that, you know, the, it's, for me, it's just patience is the word. You know, he just showed the maturity. You know, a twenty-four year old showing that sort of maturity. You know, and poise during the fight. It's you know that that's a lesson to a lot of a lot of boxers around the world. You know, and personally, I, I I think it's his character that 
allows him to achieve those feats. You know, a very humble man. Um, he never, he never speaks badly about any opponents. You know, you will note he never celebrates any of his victories. But I'm not saying fighters. That's a very personal thing. You know, it's absolutely it's it's it, it's great for a fighter to celebrate. They've been through a very tough training camp. You know, fighters can lose their lives in the ring. So I have absolutely no problem. It's a personal thing. But um, you know, Murat he doesn't make any bold, any unreasonable predictions before the fight. You know, he prefers to keep his mouth shut, and you know, anything can happen in the ring, especially when you've got two undefeated fighters. You know, two heavy punches, and the cruiserweight division. You know, these guys can can put you to sleep with one punch. Um, so I think it's that humbleness that 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 keeps him focused um, that keeps him determined um, that gives him that aptitude to learn in the gym to absorb the information um, and then pass on that information to you know younger fighters coming up you know Murat he he has the benefit of also training quite extensively with um, Abel Sanchez at Big Bear in California you know, training at altitude, um, and then mixing up back home in the Russia. So, um, so I think his his preparations are always meticulous as well. So, um, yeah, Murat Gassiev, uh, a magnificent victory, uh, unified champion now, and now he can uh, you know recuperate a little bit and uh, start plotting the strategies against. Uh, Alexander Rusek, uh, the winner taking all, all of the all of the marbles, all four belts, um, should be the link, lineal ring magazine as well. These are the best two cruiserweights in the world. Um, just a just a mouth watering final, uh, a dream final for me. The final taking place in Saudi Arabia. I'm not sure of the date whether it's going to be in April or. Or May, but Saudi Arabia. That that's certainly going to be a cultural shock for the fighters, and maybe the fans if they get to travel from, you know, Ukraine and and Russia, respectively. But um, good to see. You know, boxing is a. You know, these are world champions. So if they're representing all continents, um, you know, that that can only be good good for boxing. Uh, but we know that you know. The, the Saudi Arabians, they are the uh, the venture capitalists behind, uh, you know, the prize money and uh, for the World Boxing, you know, Super Series. So <laughs> no surprises over there. But uh, yeah, that's that's my breakdown. Um, please, in, in in the comments, let me know how um, how how you guys gauge the fight. Were you impressed with Dorticos? Was you disappointed with Dorticos? Uh, did he, did Murat Gassiev surprise you with the extra dimensions to his game? You know, I think a lot of people underestimated his ability to fight on the back foot. Um, but that's, 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 you know, another, and you know, another, when you can, uh, if you, if you read all history books on, on strategic warfare, etc you know you you never reveal all of your cards you know you 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 know that's that's the key to surprising opponents you know giving them something new to look at confusing them in the ring so you know maybe there's more in store for alexander rusik but that's going to be a tough fight against the southpaw who's probably going to try and box a little bit more but um yeah so let, let, let me know your thoughts and comments um and uh I'll see you for the next video. Corruption in Boxing, signing out.